Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looking through recent submissions to Virus Total, Xavier came across a pretty simple PowerShell backdoor that distinguished itself by being, well, not detected by a single anti virus tool. PowerShell backdoors are, well, a uh, daily occurrences, so you would think that antivirus tool have a little bit of handle on them, but uh, if you're looking at the one that Xavier found, you can kind of see how uh, they have a hard time with these very simple ones. In this case, it arrives as an obfuscated string that basically just is then split and selected correct characters are extracted from it. And the main payload is then actually received from a command control server as JSON data and then executed via invoke expression. But even if antivirus fails you here, not all is lost. Uh, Xavier is listing a couple of tricks that you can use in order to detect uh, the network traffic that this PowerShell backdoor generates. First of all, it sends HTTP requests on a slightly unusual port, 8888 and it sends them to a specific IP address, not to a host name. So the good old trick to look for any outbound connections to IP addresses that did not get returned as a DNS response. Well, uh, that's usually suspicious and something to look at. And then of course, on your endpoint, uh, having PowerShell uh, connect uh, to an odd port like this should also be something that you can alert on. So antivirus, really sort of your first and, and hopefully not last layer of defense and a good combination of host-based defenses and network defenses usually can fill the gaps that antivirus leaves behind. I don't want to skip that. Yesterday, Adobe also released updates. Uh, nothing uh, too outrageous here, but uh, quite a few products got updated. Audition, After Effects, Connect, Dimension, Experience Manager, Lightroom, Media Encoder, Prelude, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. With Photoshop probably being the most used application out of that list and many of the vulnerabilities were considered uh, critical. None of them appear to be currently exploited, so no need to expedite any of these updates. And well, we also have blogs coming up uh, with more details regarding some of the vulnerabilities in this month's Microsoft's Patch Tuesday updates. One of them is by Talium, and it describes a vulnerability in Microsoft's RDP client that was patched, uh, CVE 2021-38666. Now, as the blog post describes, a lot of RDP vulnerability research usually focuses on the server, but clients are vulnerable too, and all it takes is a user connecting to a malicious server. Interesting also in this case that the vulnerability is located in the smart card extension, but very well may be triggered remotely. It's a deserialization vulnerability. And again, a user would still have to connect to a malicious RDP server. This could in some cases happen by clicking on a link in an email or on a web page. Any exploit code would run as the user initiating the RDP connection. And well, earlier this week, we had some updates from Apple and I sort of skipped over. Yes, you know, there were a number of WebKit vulnerabilities again uh, being uh, patched, but we got a nice example of how severe and interesting some of these WebKit vulnerabilities can be. WebKit is a web browser component that Apple open sourced and it is included in various other browsers, including apparently in the PlayStation 4 and uh, Proof of concept exploit has now been published how a September vulnerability in WebKit is exploitable in PlayStation 4 and may lead to code execution. All the user has to do is visit a malicious web page. And just a quick update on log4j and really there is no significant update. The last big issue here was the release of log4j 2.16, which 
hopefully now completely patches the vulnerability where 2.15 is still pretty good. Uh, what's left and what's patched in 2.16 is a denial of service vulnerability. Overall, of course, still tons of news that's being published about Log4j, but nothing fundamentally new. Yes, state actors are going after. I think they would be negligent not to use this vulnerability. And same, of course, applies to any criminal or kid in the basement that's trying to take over an IRC channel to, well, take a look at the Log4j vulnerability while it's still fresh and while there still may be a couple of systems out there that haven't been exploited yet. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.